Kitco News coverage of Freedom Fest is brought to you by Coin Payments, crypto payments made easy. This is Kitco News coming to you from Freedom Fest 2022 in Las Vegas. I'm Michelle McQuarrie. Gold's role is to be a safe haven, a store of value, and a hedge against inflation. Now, although gold is down around 7% year to date, my next guest says that it is performing exactly as it should be. Pleased to welcome back to the show, Rich Chekin. Rich is the president of Asset Strategies International. Good to see you again, Rich. Good to be back. Thanks for having me, Michelle. All right, Rich. So we have inflation just hitting a new 40-year high. We have no shortage of geopolitical tensions with the Russian invasion of Ukraine dragging on and on. We've also got an economic slowdown predicted. Technically, we could already be in one if estimates for second quarter GDP are correct. We're technically in a recession. There. We'll know it for sure soon. But we'll know it soon. China just posted its worst GDP since the start of the pandemic. Now, granted, we have a very strong dollar, but we have these perfect storms of events that should see gold rallying, and yet it hasn't been. Yeah. That kind of leads to the question that I hear constantly uh, at this conference over emails, phone calls, et cetera. People want to know why isn't gold right. doing its job? And I, I submit it, it is. You know, what the Fed is doing right now is they're starting to deflate the everything bubble, the asset bubble, right? So all financial assets are coming down in value. In a deflationary environment, as the bubble deflates, gold performs well, but it's not appreciating. It's falling in value, but much slower at a slower rate than the other asset classes. So you see the stock market, the Dow, the S&P, um, and the NASDAQ in order, I think right now are down about 15, 21, and 28% on the year. You've got Bitcoin, which saw a lot of money go into it during the, uh, the everything bubble phase when the, the money was free and interest rates were low. Uh, you saw Bitcoin, Bitcoin go sky high. It's down 85% from last November. It's down 55% thus far this year. Gold is down too, but only 7%, about 6.8% as of this morning. And that's how gold outperforms in a deflationary environment. That is going to turn inflationary. Uh, and when it does, gold will really shine. And everybody wants to know what triggers that turn. Could be a number of things. Personally, I think what's going to happen is the Fed, as they have every other time that they've gone into a rate uh, tightening or a tighter monetary policy cycle, and they started raising rates, uh, basically at some point, things get bad and they abandon their plan. And I think a lot of people are calling for that to happen. I think we got one or two more rate hikes in us. Uh, we could see one uh, uh, in July with uh, another three quarters to possibly one yeah, percent increase at this point. 100 basis points exactly. at this point next meeting. And I think we'll see another one beyond that. But they can only go so far. Every time they raise interest rates a percent, the service of a $30 trillion debt goes up $27 million a day. They can only go so far and they have to turn back. And when they do, that's when inflation takes over again and gold shines. So you anticipate that Fed Chair Jerome Powell will not have the resolve of a Volcker and will pivot and adopt a more dovish position? Does that mean lower rates or just stop raising? I think he's going to stop raising initially and he may very well lower rates. Um, it, it depends how things play out, but I don't think he's got the fortitude that Volcker did. I don't think he's willing to risk a horrible recession uh, and uh, in order to tackle inflation. The bottom line is inflation is so much further uh, away at this point from the interest rates than what Volcker, start, Volcker started dealing with. I think they waited too long and this is too little too late. So when do you expect this pivot to happen? I think it could happen within the next 12 months, be honest with you. So, so does that mean that we just need to get used to inflation? I mean, we've had some guests on the show saying, you know what, 5% is the new 2% when it comes to inflation targets and the Fed will be relatively satisfied or at least be able to put out the narrative. We got inflation down and we're just going to have to deal with 
higher inflation and higher cost of living across the board. Is is that what you're saying as well? Yeah, uh, I personally, I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to get rid of the Fed. I don't know why we have to have inflation. Why do we let free markets dictate what the discovery of price is for any asset out there? Um, why do we have to predetermine what's good for inflation? or as a target. Well, abolish why, the Fed is a big theme at this conference. I understand, but why, why, would, why would we built in, bake in higher prices for anyone? With all the technology we have, we should be seeing prices go down as, as technology gets better and, and things improve. Okay, well, it's not likely we're gonna be abolishing the Fed sure. anytime soon. Agreed. It's relatively likely that the Fed pivot will happen. A lot of people have mentioned that this is something that they foresee taking place, much like you, similar time estimates. What does that do for the price of gold then? Uh, I think it sends it hyperbolic. I mean, we... What is uh, hyperbolic? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a gold goes to 10,000 guy. I think it will eventually, but not this year, not next year. Okay, so um, I think it's reasonable. I would much rather see gold just continue to move up in a steady fashion. I think if inflation gets very high, uh, it will move up clearly faster than anybody anticipates. But, you know, Wells Fargo, I think, uh, is still holding to their estimates right now of about $2,500 by the end of the year. They're reviewing it right now, uh, but that's where they were still at about a week or so ago. Um, that could possibly happen. Uh, the, the high price for me for any bull market in gold is probably uh, uh, another third to two thirds above what it was at the last high point. So we saw 850, then we saw 1900. I think realistically, we're probably looking at about 3500 as the peak for gold before we pull back and then start the cycle again. 3500 within the next 12 months? I think 24. Okay, so yeah. thirty five hundred. I think we got a few late, a few years uh, of uh, uh, movement in this gold market before it gets topish. So, I do want to get your long term gold forecast, and I'll get back there. But I do want to focus on this idea that although gold is supposed to be an inflation hedge, inflation and gold have actually been diverging since twenty twenty one. Inflation steadily rising, while gold has dropped since the peak that it hit uh, it in August of twenty twenty. So you could... Can I ask in what currency? Well, in the dollar. Now, granted, it's been a very strong dollar, but we do price gold in the dollar. Yeah. And we are talking about inflation with regards to the U.S. and the U.S. dollar. Understood. So there has been the, the divergence between gold price, uh, August 2020 high, and inflation soaring, and gold just hasn't been keeping up on the contrary, moving in an opposite direction. See, I, th I think, I, or I would submit, that gold has done an amazing job against the headwind of a 13% increase in the dollar just this year, right? So it wasn't that long ago that the dollar was down to 95 on the index against the basket of currencies, and now it's at 108. It's down to 108 from almost 109. That's an astronomical move in any currency to include the world's reserve. The only reason the dollar is enjoying that kind of strength is not because it is fundamentally strong. It's doing it because the currencies you're comparing it to are, are fundamentally weaker. Uh, so in the face of a 13% increase in the dollar, the, the gold, which is kind of the opposite on the seesaw, if you will, uh, gold has only dropped 7%. I think it's doing an amazing job. If you look at gold priced in other currencies, it's hitting all-time highs in a lot of them. So as we're potentially facing a very dark economic time of higher inflation, slower growth, stagflation. That's exactly where I think we're going. Yeah. What are the reasons that an investor should look at buying gold now? It's cheap. <laughs> you know, I mean, if we're waiting for gold to take off with inflation and it has come down uh, against that strong dollar for whatever reason, where it is now, I, you know, I've talked to a few experts uh, and I agree with them. You know, did you think it would get this low? Most of us felt it would hold about 1780 to 1800, that technical range. It's come well below that. I think it is overdone and a, and a bargain for investors to pick up here. Well, you know, Rich, this idea of gold being manipulated has been gaining traction. We had Frank Joustra on the show not too long ago saying that he does believe that gold is manipulated, certainly by the derivatives market. JP Morgan had a couple of people charged with spoofing manipulating the price of gold. 
What are your thoughts there? Uh, I believe every market is manipulated, either overtly or covertly. Um, biggest manipulator out there, if you ask me, is the Fed. What they do with interest rates, they affect markets worldwide. But, you know, you could look at Bitcoin. Elon Musk sends out a tweet. It sends the price of Bitcoin going one way or the other. Uh, absolutely, the gold markets have been manipulated. There, there are other folks that have been not just charged, but found guilty of those manipulations. So that all happens. And, you know, bad people in every industry are going to surface. I think in the long run, markets win out, though. So it does beg the question, though, if there is manipulation and if it's at a bigger level, yeah. why invest in gold? You still think the market triumphs somehow in the end? I do. I mean, you know, you look at... How so? I had When I first started working at, at uh, ASI back in 1996, I had people coming to me saying gold was expensive at $250 to $300 an ounce. Um, I have them telling me that today. Uh, at $1,700 an ounce. But the fact of the matter is, measured in fiat currency, as long as we keep increasing the money supply, then the gold price in that fiat currency is going to increase over time. And if you pull out and you pan out and you look at the long term for gold and not just get wrapped up in the day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month, you will see that gold continues to make higher lows and higher highs. And it's not going to change as long as we measure it with fiat. Well, it is, in fact, the best performing asset of uh, the millennium. No Although question about it. 22 years. Break that down for us. Well, you'll get that here at Kitco News. You're not going to get that at the mainstream press. I'll tell you that because the mainstream press is paid by others, you know, stock market and banks and whatnot. Uh, but if you look back for 22 years, gold is up almost 500 percent. It was up within a couple of weeks, about 550 percent. Um, but it's only up about 500 percent, 491, I think, as of this morning. Compare that to the stock markets where... On the talking heads, they'll tell you that, uh, you know, the stocks are, are making uh, new highs virtually every day. The reality is in that same 22-year period, they're up somewhere between 160 and 180%. The Far S&P cry. s and NASDAQ, Dow, all of them in about that range over 22 years. So if you bought gold and held it for 22 years, you would be doing a lot better than had you bought uh an S&P index. Now, that is not the whole story, right? You know, obviously, if you get dividends and they're reinvested and things of this right. nature, that, but we're just looking at the absolute movement in the markets. Um, it's better for gold than with any of the three indices. So given all of this, what is your five-year outlook for the price of gold? You said 3,500 in the next two years. Where do you see gold in I, the next five years? And, and you know, this is just throwing ideas out into the wind, you know, we'll see what actually happens. And in the long run, it doesn't matter, right? Because gold will still do its job as a store of purchasing power. But I do think we'll see 3,500 in a couple, two to three years. Uh, Five years out, I'd probably see it lower than that because I think we'll transition and turn back to another cycle and a pause before we look to make that new higher high. And that new higher high, give me gold in a decade's time then. (laughs) Then following my, my formula, yeah. then I'm probably looking somewhere around five to six thousand dollar gold. Okay. Five yeah. to six thousand dollar gold. And if it doesn't right. happen, but you're holding gold, you're still gonna love me. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll tell you that right now. Well we do love you for joining us here on Kitco News. Rich, always great to catch up. Thank you so much. Rich Thank, you. Thank you for having me, Michelle. Kitco News coverage of Freedom Fest is brought to you by Coin Payments. Crypto payments made easy.